Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Kalyan. I'm a neurosurgeon and spine surgeon. In this session, I'll be telling you regarding what is coccidinia or tailbone pain. I'll be giving you a very brief overview and in my successive videos, I'll be explaining them in detail. So let me share my presentation and overview. So what is coccidinia? Before you understand what is coccidinia, you should also understand what is coccyx. As it is evident, coccidinia is pain in the region of the coccyx. So coccidinia is pain in the region of the coccyx. So coccidinia is pain in the region of the coccyx. But what is coccyx? Coccyx is a terminal segment of the spinal cord. See this, this is our vertebral column. The lowest part of the vertebral column, concentrate, concentrate on this. So the lowest part of the vertebral column is a triangular piece of bone. This inter is made up of three to four, five small segments of bone. This triangular piece of bone which is in present in the terminal segment of the spine is known as the coccyx and pain in the coccyx is known as coccidinia. This is still zoomed out view. So this is known as our sacrum. This is known as sacrum. This is a portion of the bone which is just above the coccyx and this terminal piece of bone is known as the coccyx. So why, what is coccidinia? Why does it receive the name of coccidinia? In some animals that actually have tails, the bones of coccyx at the bottom of the spine help them move their tail around. But in humans, those bones are partially fused together. So coccyx is analogous to tail bone and hence coccidinia is called tail bone pain. First, let us understand what are the functions of coccyx. Coccyx serves as the site of insertion of various muscles and ligaments of the pelvic floor and ligaments of the pelvic floor. And hence, coccyx helps in maintaining the tone of the pelvic floor. Now see this diagram. This is our coccyx. What I'm drawing in red is the coccyx the terminal portion of our vertebral column and the spinal cord. This bone, by means of numerous ligaments, provides some support to the anus. What is, this is our anus. So by means of various ligaments or supports, ligaments are something like strings or threads supporting it. So the anus gains its support by means of the strings which are attached to the coccyx. So the coccyx provides positional support to the anus. This is a very important function of coccyx. You understand this because this will help you know why coccidinia causes pain. Coccyx serves as one leg of the tripod along with the ischial tuberosities that provides weight bearing support to a person in the seated position. So what are the three components of tripods? In the center, we have the coccyx. And on either side, we have the ischial tuberosities. Let us see in a different picture. See, this is the view when I'm seeing from the side. This is a view of our sacrum, uh, sacrum pelvis together. So when I'm sitting on this side, you can see the tripod for sitting. In the midline, it is a tailbone. On either side, it is the ischial tuberosities. Okay, this is on one side and you have the other ischial tuberosity on the other side. So these three are the tripods. These three parts of your sacrum and pelvis, they touch the chair when you sit. That is, they provide support to your body when you sit. And in the midline, what touches the chair? That is the coccyx. 
So particularly when you lean backward, particularly when you lean backward in sitting position, the way I am sitting now, it leads to increased pressure on the coccyx. Similarly, the pressure on the coccyx increases when a person tries to stand up from sitting position. So is it very clear now? So coccytinia at tailbone pain is very is increases when the patient sits. Obviously, because when the patient sits, the coccyx the coccyx touches the chair or the hard surface and it causes pain. Similarly, when the patient tries to stand up from the sitting position, in the act of sitting, the tailbone touches the hard surface and it causes pain. So what are the risk factors? Women are more common. Adolescents and adults are more likely to present with coccidinia than children. And rapid weight loss also causes coccidinia because this decreases the cushioning of the butt provided by the fat around the buttocks. Coming to coccidinia. The cause of coccidinia is most commonly trauma. It can be the internal trauma or the external trauma. See this picture. This is external trauma. The person is falling on his buttocks. The tailbone is, situ is situated in between the buttocks, just above your anus. So when the patient falls on the, um, falls this way, it leads to dislocated or broken coccyx. See this picture. This is during childbirth. During childbirth, normally when the child descends through this one, the coccyx slightly moves backward. This provides, opens the passage for the child to come out. Suppose the coccyx is not mobile or because of the any abnormality in the child, like a very big head, or the delivery is not conducted properly. The while during the process of delivery, the child head made the coccyx leading to injury. Sometimes this is the our anus. If there is constipation, this constipation leads to very hard stools. These stools can injure the coccyx and lead, lead to coccidinia. Prolonged sitting, minor trauma. The prolonged sitting. If your chair is bad, if you are sitting for a longer time, the coccyx repeatedly hits the chair, and over long duration, this can lead to coccidinia. Okay, these were the traumatic causes. There are non-traumatic causes which are equally uh, which are equally causative for coccidinia. This is a coccyx, a coccyx which is hypermobile, moving excessively forward or excessively backward, or a coccyx which is not at all mobile, which is rigid. These are the causes of non-traumatic causes of co coccidinia. See this example. Here the coccyx is hypermobile. So this causes coccidinia by putting pressure on the ligaments. Rare causes, there will be neoplasms and infectious, and in very rare causes, non-organic or non-organic causes such as somatization and other psychological disorders should also be ruled out. Always rule out an infection or neoplasm as a cause of coccidinia. This patient is having a cordum of coccyx, which is a neoplasm of coccyx. Symptoms. The classic presentation of coccidinia is localized pain over the coccyx. The patient present, com, present with complaining of tailbone pain. And as I've explained you before, the pain usually be worse, worse with prolonged sitting, leaning back while sitting, and also while rising from a sitting position. Pain can also be present during defecation, as shown in picture. This is the coccyx, which is already injured. If there is constipation, the feces, which is very hard during the act of defecation, will exert pressure on the coccyx. And this pressure on the coccyx will cause exacerbation of symptoms of tailbone pain. How do you diagnose? The gold standard for diagnosis is palpation. How do you palpate? This is called bimanual palpation. The physician puts one finger inside the anus and the other finger is put externally. So the, the physician tries to 
palpate your coccyx between his two fingers. He will be able to elicit the pain. He will be able to elicit, he will be able to diagnose abnormal curvatures and also abnormal pathologies like his spicules. Most important part of diagnosis is X-rays and MRI or CT scan. The most important part is a dynamic X-ray, which are known as a sit stand X-rays, which are known as a sit stand X-rays. These X-rays required a lot of experience and expertise. This I will be speaking about in my next sessions. Treatment. Prevention is better than cure. An initial part of treatment mostly usually consists of using specially made coccygeal cushions. They are designed in such a way that when you sit, the pressure of your body is not borne by the coccyx. These are usually available over the counter. We also teach the patient to adopt proper sitting posture. Application of heat and cold over the site is also beneficial. We use a non uh, analgesics in the form of non steroidal anti inflammatory agents. Sometimes opioids are given, but they are reserved only for severe pain. Various exercises are available. They are called pelvic floor rehabilitation exercises. They are designed to decrease the pelvic floor muscle spasm. Tens which is known as transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation is also beneficial, which are given by two techniques, either with two external probes or one internal and one external probe. If all these conservative measures fail, then comes to the second step where guided injections, the injections are guided either under ultrasound guidance or under CM guidance. You give injections, which is a combination of local anesthetic with or without steroid, which can be diagnostic and therapeutic. If all this treatment fails, the final treatment is coccygectomy, which is excision of the coccyx. This is a disclaimer and thank you. Thank you.